since my niece Kelly changed in one magic moment from a freckled, gawky teenager into a lovely young woman, Peter and I have had to get used to a steady stream of ardent young men around the house. But Warren Dawson was different. He didn't even know Kelly. Fresh out of law school, all Warren wanted was a job in my firm. Um, this is quite a recommendation, Warren, especially from a man like Dean Phillips of Cal State. Thank you, sir. It's because of Dean Phillips I decided to contact you first. He spoke very highly of your practice of law. Oh, that's very flattering. Warren, I'm very impressed with you, but unfortunately, I've always run sort of a one-man operation here. In other words, no opening. Sorry. However, I will put in a few calls to some of the larger firms for you, if you like. Thanks, but I just hate getting lost in the shuffle. You're, uh, you're sort of a young man in a hurry, aren't you? Oh, well, why operate in low gear when you're built for overdrive? Isn't there some way to convince you I could pull my weight around here? Uh, you've convinced me already. It's just that I said that you're a one-man operation. I know. Well, thank you very much, sir. I do appreciate you seeing me in. Hi, Uncle Bentley. I was just... I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, well, that's all right. This is Warren Dawson. This is my niece, Kelly. Hello, Miss Craig. How do you do? <laughs> well, I'm right on time. Are you ready? Ready for what? Don't tell me you forgot. The courthouse, the parking ticket that wasn't my fault, remember? Oh, you completely slipped my mind. Oh, darling, I made a very important appointment for this morning. I don't see how I can break it. But I wanted to plead not guilty. How can I without legal advice? Well, I don't know quite... Uh, Mr. Gregg, I'd be more than happy to take your place in court. Well, I think I know enough about law to handle a parking ticket. But... Oh, as a matter of fact, your uncle has my qualifications in front of him right now. Darling, you couldn't find a better man for the job. Of course, I, uh, I don't know quite what his fee will be. My fee is lunch, and I'll buy. Even the price is right. It's a deal. Warren, I'm really very sorry about that job. Oh, that's all right, sir. Perhaps I can catch you again in a weaker moment. <laughs> Bye. Bye, see you later. Goodbye. <laughs> I spent four years in the military. It keeps you entertained with original primetime programs like The Campbells. Each episode sends you on a warm and personal journey into the exciting and often dangerous lives of this early pioneering family. Saturdays here on your CBN cable network. Peter, you not have to tiptoe in like burglar, Mr. Gray. You not wake anybody up. I the only one here. You mean that Kelly isn't in yet? Little Sparrow go out with Legal Eagle and turn into Night Owl. <laughs> Not Warren Dawson again. She's been out with him every other night this past month. One month and three days. What's he trying to do? Turn that parking ticket into an appeal to the Supreme Court? I think this is a little bit late to be coming in, two o'clock on a weekday night. I'm sorry, but there were extenuating circumstances. Better be good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see, Warren proposed. Oh, well, in that case, I suppose... He what? He asked me to marry him. And after all, I did have to take some time to think about it, didn't I? <laughs> oh, of course, I understand. You had to take a little extra time to, to soften the blow. Not easy to turn down nice boy gently. But I didn't. You didn't what? I didn't turn him down. I said yes. <laughs> you said yes? What do you mean you say yes? How dare you say yes without consulting me? <laughs> what I around here? Door poles? Where I come from, no girl ever say yes without consulting parents. But I am consulting both of you. Warren's coming over tomorrow to ask permission. Oh, I'm so happy and so excited. Now, darling, don't you think this is a little premature? After all, you only know him for a month. Exactly 33 days. Don't you think you're too young to be married? You're only 19. What about your college? What about your education? Two more years to go. Would you mind letting her answer these questions? <laughs> I'm too excited to answer questions now. Can't we talk about it tomorrow? I just want to go to sleep and dream about being Mrs. Warren Dawson. Good night, Uncle Bentley. Good night, Peter. 
Glad somebody around here able to sleep. Just got big case of insomnia myself. Ridiculous. She's just a young, impressionable girl, and she doesn't even know her own mind yet. How can she even consider marriage? Not every lawyer who can turn parking ticket into marriage license. <laughs> he come down to your office for job. You turn him down. So he take Miss Kelly out and... Hmm, you may have something there, Peter. Yes. He couldn't make it through the front door of my office, so he's trying to sneak in the back way, through Kelly. That boy nothing but cheap fortune hunter. Of course, we may be doing him an injustice, but I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to find out what Mr. Warren Dawson really wants, Kelly or, or just a nice, soft job the rest of his life. What time is it now, Uncle Bentley? It's uh, two minutes later than the last time you asked, dear. Straighten your tie. You'll be here any minute. Uh, how's the shine on my shoes? <laughs> Peter, do you call that a clean house coat? It's been clean for a whole week now. First time you complain. And one of the buttons doesn't match. Could you change it, please? Who on trial here anyway? Him or me? Oh, Peter, remember, he doesn't like almond cookies and Chinese tea. And Uncle Bentley, please, don't tell any law jokes. He's probably heard them all anyway. All right, there are anything to make a good impression. He's here. He's here. Hi, Warren. Hi, Kelly. Warren, nice to see you again. Hello, Mr. Gregg. Good afternoon, Peter. Good afternoon. I'm uh, sorry I'm not wearing tuxedo. How's that? Uh, come in, Warren. Can I get you something? Oh, no, thanks. How about some almond cookies and some Chinese tea? <laughs> Peter, don't you have something to do in the kitchen? No, but I ad lib something. <laughs> well. Uh, oh! I forgot. I have to go over to Ginger's for a minute. I'll be right back. I'm sure you two will find something to talk about while I'm gone. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Sit down, won't you, Warren? Oh, thank you, sir. How have you been? Fine, sir. Yeah. Just fine, thank you. Good, good. Warren, let's come right to the point. No sense in making any small talk, and we both know why you're here. You want my permission to marry Kelly, don't you? And you want my blessings as well, correct? I guess that's what it boils down to, sir. Thanks for making it so easy for me to say. I'm a very practical man. Before I give you my answer, I'd, uh, I'd like to make a proposal of my own. Yes, sir. Since we first met in my office, I've added three or four very important clients. And frankly, the work is getting a little too much for me. Now, if you were still available, I might consider changing my firm to a, a two-man operation. You mean you're offering me a job? If you'd like it. Sir, I, I don't know what to say. You can start Monday morning at 8.30 sharp. It's just great, sir. Now about Kelly. Yes. Yes, well, I was thinking about that. Warren, what I'd like to see you do is to pitch in. Get yourself established in the law profession first. And then in five or six months, we can discuss the question of marrying Kelly. Now, uh, what would you say about that? I guess we might have been rushing things a bit, sir. Kelly will just have to understand. My career has to come first. Mm -hmm. Smart boy. Congratulations. As I said before, sir, just don't know what to say. Well, don't say it to me. Say it to Kelly. She's over next door at Ginger's house. Yes, sir, I will. Right away. Ah, Peter, did you hear him? Did you hear what he said? Yeah. Any doubt in your mind now what he's really after? No doubt at all. The minute you dangle a job in front of him, he not able to postpone marriage fast enough. Exactly. Mr. Gregg, if I were you, I'd not even give him a job. Hmm? He's a very slippery customer. Soon he wants bigger offers than private secretary, <laughs> than name on door. Oh, come on. <laughs> Badly Gregg, attorney at law. Change to Bentley, Greg, and Associate. <laughs> Next it'd be Greg and Dawson. Then Dawson and Greg. <laughs> then Dawson and Dawson. Now, where's the other Dawson come in? Operator like him bound to have relatives. <laughs> I, 
I tell you, when he finds out how rough it is to work for me, we'll see how soon he drops that job. And Kelly along with it. You mark my word. Uncle Bentley. You're wonderful. I just heard the news. Just think. Greg and Dawson, attorneys at law. <laughs> How are you doing with Operation Fortune Hunter? Fine. I've given them a little legal puzzler tonight that'll keep them tied in knots until midnight. Warren, I thought you were working late tonight. Can I kill your uncle in? Sure, come on in. What happened, Warren? I thought you were working on the Thorndike case. Yes, sir, all finished. You finished? Well, I mean, sir, after I started reading, I got the impression it was all a waste of time. Well, it didn't make sense to go on fighting a case that so obviously should be settled out of court. Don't you think that's a decision to be made by the senior member of the firm? Yes, sir. As a matter of fact, that's exactly the way I felt. So I checked the files. You settled out of court two weeks ago. <laughs> it must have slipped your mind, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, yes, it must have. Lucky thing you had Warren to double check you, wasn't it? Come on, Warren, we can still make the party. That is, if you'll lend us your car again. Well, sure. <laughs> Thanks, Uncle Bentley. Thank you. Good night. Good night, night now. <laughs> Next time you tie that boy up in knots, better use handcuffs. He's a very slippery customer. <laughs> <laughs> the gentleman who promised to take me to lunch today? We just had it. Sorry, Kel. Oh, no, not again. Give me one good reason why you can't leave this office for an hour. One? I will give you precisely 937 of them. That's how many more letters I have to refile, alphabetically and with a cross index. Maybe this is just Uncle Bentley's way of breaking you in. You know, like a shakedown cruise. He shakes much longer. I'll come apart at the seams. Warren, this doesn't sound like you at all. I thought you loved your work. Filing and typing and dusting the law books? Well, that's not work. That's legal KP. You mean that's all my uncle ever lets you do? Oh, no, not exactly. Uh, occasionally, I run down to the drugstore and get him a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, honey. I didn't mean to great. Actually, I'd be glad to work around the clock if I thought I were pulling my weight around here. Sure, I understand. Uh, Warren, would you come in here a minute, please? Right away, sir. My master's voice. I'm sorry, honey. Give me a rain check. Sure. See you later. But it's not fair. He didn't earn a sheepskin as an attorney just so you could put him on legal KP. Is that what he called it? Well, yes. Funny, he didn't say anything to me about it. Of course he didn't. Warren's not the complaining type. He's the most decent, honest person I've ever met. That's one of the reasons I want to marry him. But darling, what about his reasons? Has it ever occurred to you that there might be something other than love involved in this thing? Uncle Bentley, you're not making sense. Well, honey, I don't know how to say this, but has it entered your mind that he might be using marriage as a as a stepping stone to a lucrative career. You can't really believe that. Not about Warren. Well, I'm not making any accusations. I'm just pointing out a possibility, that's all. You've always been so fair and understanding. And now when I need you most, how could you? How could you be so wrong? Main event getting tougher? I don't know, Peter. Just possible that we've been misjudging that boy. Maybe you're right, Mr. Gray. Perhaps I ought to try a different tack. What do you think? Well, at least you stop feeling like Simon Legree, and I stop feeling like Fu Manchu. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kendricks, about your deposition, I'd like to turn you over to my associate, a very thorough and conscientious young man. Yes, Mr. Gray. Oh, Warren. I'd like you to take this deposition, and then I'd like you to handle Mr. Kendrick's case. 
Well, Warren Dawson. Mr. Kendricks. You two know each other? Since he was this high. <laughs> Matter of fact, I had dinner with Warren and his father six weeks ago, the day he passed his bar exam. <laughs> you should have seen him that night. The ink was still dripping from his diploma, and already he was making plans for his next move. Uh, Mr. Kendricks, I'm sure Mr. Craig isn't interested in all that. <laughs> no, no, on the contrary, I'd love to hear all about it. Well, of course he would. Every man likes a little flattery once in a while. Do you know that he made a pledge that night to be working for you, the Bentley Greg, inside of a month? Amazing. And now to realize that he has actually pulled it off. Yes, you really have to hand it to him, don't you? Uh, let's see now, Warren. You're helping me prepare that rebuttal on the Holberg case right now, aren't you? Yes, sir. I'm typing 10 copies. Of course, if you have something else for me to do. Yes, type 20 copies. I wouldn't want to run short while I'm taking Mr. Kendrick's deposition. Yes, sir. Mr. Kendrick's. Connie, I'll go over the rest of these things with you tomorrow. And will you drop these in the mailbox on your way home, please? I finished the whole burglary rebuttal, Mr. Gregg. 20 copies. Oh, fine. But I believe I told you the date of this action was the 5th. You've got it listed here as the 6th. Well, I must have forgotten. And the plaintiff's name is Anna Holberg. You called her Hannah Holberg. Sorry, I never was much of a typist. Well, obviously, you don't read very well either. My notes clearly stated this was a civil case. You've called it a criminal complaint. Now, what are you trying to do? Make me the laughing stock of the entire Bar Association? As I said, sir, I'm sorry. I'm not interested in apologies. I hired you because I thought you were a competent attorney. Wouldn't it be easier, Mr. Gregg, if you just fired me? Just remember that you said it. I didn't. In that case, I guess there's nothing more to talk about. Well, so much for the firm of Greg and Dawson, attorneys at law. Is it? Why, of course. He's pulled boners that would put a first-year law student to shame. For a qualified attorney who graduated at the top of his class, he couldn't have done worse if he tried. Mm. Good night, Mr. Greg. In the early 1930s, Judge Cardoza handed down a civil decision in regard to privity of contract. Did you ever hear of that? The McPherson case eliminated the necessity of that element in a situation regarding the defective manufacture of certain types of fabricated goods. That's right. You know, it's funny. Someone can remember the details of a case that happened 30 years ago and still fail to see the exact parallel in the case he was working on. If you mean the Holberg rebuttal, sir, that was carelessness. Was it? I don't think so. Warren, I think you made those mistakes knowing that I was bound to catch them. You're entitled to an opinion, sir. Why? Why did you deliberately set out to get fired after all the trouble you went through to get this job? After what Mr. Kendrick said this morning, what other choice did I have? Well, even you have to admit it did sound like a cold-blooded conspiracy. I suppose it did, but Sometimes words taken out of context can take on a different meaning, Mr. Gregg. The truth is, it all started long before I'd ever heard of Kelly. You see, there are only about 12 top-flight corporate attorneys in this city. In my book, you're number one. You practice law the way it was meant to be practiced. I just wanted the opportunity to learn from the very best. If that's a conspiracy, well, then I plead guilty. Only to admiring you and what you stand for. Good night, Mr. Grego. Clean out the rest of my things in the morning. Well, under the circumstances, I'd rather you didn't waste your time coming in. But I don't understand. What about the... I have a case to plead in Superior Court, 8.30. I, uh, I could use a little help. Help? Well, you're an attorney, aren't you? You're my associate, aren't you? But I don't understand. Juan, everybody makes mistakes. Or take me. I've been known to misjudge some pretty fine people in my time. Fortunately, this time, I was able to catch my mistake. 
I was just leaving. You care to join me? I'm sure Kelly would be delighted to see you outside the office for a change. Oh, and uh, remind me to have this redone. The letters are a little small. <laughs> Eight hundred four five three three two two zero. The Rolls Royce Silver Ghost, a most incredible model of the world's most incredible car. There's nothing quite like owning a Rolls Royce. Uncle Bentley, would you excuse us? I mean, we'd love to spend the evening here with you. Of course, darling. Run along. Here, I'd better take the keys to my car. It's a little more romantic than the bus. Thanks, Mr. Gregg. See you in the morning? All right, 8.30 sharp, Superior Court. Oh, I'll be there. Good night. Good night. Good night. You know something, Peter? I like that boy. I think Kelly's a very lucky girl. He's pretty lucky, too. Where else he get package deal like this? Pretty wife, rich father, and Chinese mother-in-law? <laughs> Coming up, Eddie Albert and Eva Gabor in Green Acres. Then tonight at 9 Eastern, television that can make a difference on the exciting new 700 Club here on CBN.